And just to give you an outline of what we're doing, I'm going to go to my page here that has all that information. It is an Evernote link. So basically what happens is that um, uh, 7 o'clock I do some welcoming and housekeeping. Then at uh, 7.05 we give an invocation. Uh, invocation, isn't that a fancy word? We invite the Holy Spirit's presence. And not that God is not, God is not really in need of an invitation for his presence because he's ever present, right? I mean, God is here, there, everywhere. Because if it weren't for God himself, we would not even be here. Does that make sense? It's kind of like the sun. If the sun in our solar system went bye-bye, we wouldn't be here, right? So, um, however, the invitation, um, it, it's like a, it's an invitation. Hey, come abide with me. So we invite the Holy Spirit to have his way. And when we pray, especially, we need to be conscious that it's not in our own ability, but it's really aided by the power of the Holy Spirit to pray for one another. Because we honestly don't know how to pray as we should. We ask the Lord to teach us to pray. Then at 7.15, we go through the scripture readings of the day. 7.30, we begin our intercessions and thanksgivings for one another, our leaders, Holy Church, um, especially for this government, the upcoming elections, the law enforcement officials, et cetera, et cetera. And then 745, usually the closing prayers and blessing, unless I get on some roll, and which has been known to happen. So, and then just fasten your seatbelts. Now, this is being recorded, so you can always come back later. Uh, I would encourage you to share it out if you're just joining us on uh, any of the social media areas right now. And time to time, I will stop and check and see if what comments are going on there. So I'm gonna, and also I will put the post to the, the link to the uh, uh, Patreon page in this as well. Let's see, I can click off of that. I don't need that anymore. PT and BTP. So, all right, there's where we have it. And one last share, and I'll be good to go. Seven oh seven. I, if I could have this all automated, believe me, I would. However, there we go. So there are just a couple of links there. Are you ready to get going? Are you ready to pray? All right. See if I can find out where I am. And here's my official greeting. Hello, good morning. This is Father Wade here in Lakeland, Florida, and I want to thank you for joining with us for morning prayer. Uh, scripture admonishes us and encourages us to pray without ceasing. And that's what we want to do this morning. We want to pray. Why do people pray? Well, because we need help. <laughs> and it, yes, that's exactly right. There is, there's a good way of praying and a bad way of praying, and we ask the Lord to teach us how to pray good. One way in which we pray is, is in humility. Uh, we offer up a sacrifice of praise. You know, God's not after you to make a big sacrifice in the sense of going out and offering up your, uh, your, your yoke of oxen or your sheep or your cattle or your BMW <laughs> or your Mercedes Benz or your uh, Ford Fairlane. Do they even make those anymore? See, he's not looking really for those sacrifices of giving up of things like that. He's more interested in obedience and a sacrifice of praise, the giving of our lives and serving one another. And it's all about humility. And here's a scripture from Revelation that I love to start with. It says, And the Spirit and the bride say, Come. And let him that hears say, Come. And let him that is thirsty come. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life freely. That's in Revelation 22, 17. And Jesus said, He that believes on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly will flow rivers of living water. And that's what we want. We want the Spirit-inspired rivers of living water to flow through us today. Not just in prayer, but in, in all of our relationships. When the going gets tough and when we get heated from the fatigue of the day, isn't it nice to have ri a river of clean, cool water of refreshment? Well, that's the power of the Holy Spirit. And in the heat, in the midst of trouble and persecution and, and all kinds of anxiety, we can drink of the springs of living water. Psalm 143 says, Cause me to hear your loving kindness in the morning, for in you do I trust. Cause me to know the way in where I should walk, for I lift up my soul to you. Now, I'm an Orthodox Old Catholic priest. That means I pray the prayers from uh, the ancient church. But the ancient church is not dead and, alit and, and buried. It's alive and well. In fact, Scripture tells us that we are encompassed about by a great cloud of witnesses. So we're going to follow in some of the good, godly tradition that's passed down. And I'll pray. When I pray, I pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Because that's what Jesus said. If you go teach, 
Teach all nations, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I'll make the sign of the cross often because it's in the power of the cross, the preaching of the cross, that is in our salvation. It's kind of like doing a prayer in sign language, right? So if you see me doing that, that's good. The early church did it, and I love that, the, that it's continued on until this day. So God have mercy on me, a sinner. And I ask you first, before I get started, forgive me, a sinner. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you. Glory a ti, Señor. Glory a ti. O heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of truth, you are everywhere present and you fill all things. You're the treasury of all blessing and the giver of life. Come and abide with us. Live in us. Cleanse us from every stain of sin and save our souls, O good one. Holy God. Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. Santo Dios, Santo Fuerte, Santo Inmortal, Señor Ten Piedad de Nosotros. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, forgive us of our sins. Master, pardon our transgressions. Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities and our weaknesses for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy. Kyrie eleison, which is Greek. Señor ten piedad, and that's Spanish. And there's a few more, but I'm not going to go beyond that. Glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, and your will be done on earth, in earth, as it is in heaven. Lord, give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we have already forgiven those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the dominion and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Arising from sleep, we fall down before you, O good one, and we sing and cry out to you, the Almighty One, the angelic hymn. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord God Almighty. Through the prayers of the Theotokos, have mercy on us. We give glory to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now that you have raised us up from our beds of sleep, enlighten our hearts and our minds and open our mouths that we may show forth your praise, O Holy Trinity. For holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Through the prayers of the Theotokos, have mercy on us now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Suddenly the judge shall come and the deeds and the actions of everyone will be made known. Therefore, in fear, we cry out at midnight, holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Through the prayers of the Theotokos, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, help us. Señor ten piedad, Señor ten piedad, Señor ten piedad, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Lord, help us. Lord, have mercy. Arising from sleep, I fall down before you, O Holy Trinity. For in your great goodness and love, you have not become angry with me in my negligence and sinfulness, nor have you destroyed me in my, in my sins. But Lord, you have raised me up as I lay in despair that I may sing the glories of your majesty. So Lord, enlighten the eyes of our understanding and our heart and open our hearts to receive your word. Teach us your commandments and help us to do your will, confessing you from our hearts, singing, praising your all holy name. Come, let us worship God, our King. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ, our King and our God. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ himself, our King and our God. Hello, good morning. This is Father Wade here in Lakeland, Florida. I want to thank you this morning for joining me for morning prayers. Hey, Rick, God bless you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining with us for morning prayers. Uh, the next prayer that we're going to pray is from Psalm 50 or 51 depending on which numbering that you use. Yeah, believe it or not, they've got different numbers. And um, Rick, I think it's brought, good afternoon to you. Or are you still in mourning? God bless you. It's good to see you there. All right. 
So here's Psalm 50 or 51. This is a transformational psalm. It's a repentant. It's a song to repent. It's a, it's a psalm to uh, a penitent psalm. And that's what I mean by transformation, by change. Okay. And here it goes. You can pray with me and follow along. I'm going to post some of these. I'll be, I'm in the process of producing a little prayer book that I'll have on my Patreon page. And um, it goes like this. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy. And according to your great goodness, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done that which is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in, in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, you desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, Lord, and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Fill me with joy and gladness and let the bones which you have humbled rejoice. Lord, hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and uphold me with a consistent and right spirit. Cast me not away from your presence and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Lord, restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with a willing spirit. Then I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will return to you. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, you God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of your deliverance. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall show forth your praise. You have no delight in sacrifice, Lord. Were I to give a burnt offering, you would not be pleased. But the sacrifice acceptable to you, Lord, is a broken spirit, a broken and humble heart, O God, you will not despise. Do good to Zion in your good pleasure, Lord, and rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will delight in right sacrifices and burnt offerings and whole burnt offerings. Then bulls will be offered on your altar. And that's Psalm 50. So it's great. This, the Psalms remembers the, the prayer book of the early church. And, and you pray in the Psalms, it's hard to go wrong. Now, there's another psalm that's a great one. It's called Psalm 3. And I'm going to pray Psalm 3 right now. I just lost my page. <laughs> Here we go, Psalm 3. Lord, how many are my foes? Many are rising against me. Many are saying of me, there is no help for him and God. But you, Lord, are a shield about me my glory and the lifter of my head. I cry aloud to the Lord and he answers me from his holy hill. I lie down asleep and I wake again for the Lord sustains me. I am not afraid of 10,000s of people who have set themselves against me round about. Arise, O Lord, deliver me, O my God, for you strike all of my enemies on the cheek and you break the teeth of the wicked. Deliverance belongs to the Lord and your blessing be upon your people. And here's Psalm 63. O Lord, you are my God, I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you as in a dry and weary land where no water is. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you, and so I will bless you as long as I live. I will lift up my hands, and I'll call upon your name. My soul is feasted as with marrow and fat, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I think upon you upon my bed, and I meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help, and in the shadow of your wings I sing for joy. My soul clings to you, and your right hand upholds me. But those who seek to destroy my life shall go down to the depths of the earth. They shall be given over to the power of the sword, and they shall be prey for jekylls. But the king shall rejoice in God, and all who swear by him shall glory, for the mouths of liars will be stopped. Good morning, and that was Psalm 63. Now we're going to go, it's uh, 7.15. I says we go into their scripture readings for the day, and 7.19, so a little, little past time here. But here's the readings of today. And a good cup of coffee. Ah, glory to you, Lord. Wisdom, be attentive. The reading is from St. Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 14. Brethren, he who observes the day observes it in honor of the Lord. And he also who eats, eats in honor of the Lord, since he gives thanks to God. While he who abstains, abstains in honor of the Lord and give thanks to God. None of us lives to himself, and none of us dies to himself. 
If we live, we live to the Lord. If we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died and lived again, that he might be the Lord of both the dead and the living. This is the word of the Lord. And a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Wisdom, let us attend. At that time, Jesus called his disciples to him and said, I have compassion on the crowd because they have been with me now three days and have nothing to eat, and I am unwilling to send them away hungry lest they faint on the way. And the disciples said to him, Where are we to get bread enough in the desert to feed so great a crowd? And Jesus said to them, How many loaves do you have? And he said, Seven, and a few small fish. And commanding the crowd to sit down on the ground, he took the seven loaves and the fish, and having given thanks, he broke them and gave them to the disciples, and the, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And they all ate and were satisfied, and they took up seven baskets full of the broken pieces left over. Those who ate were four thousand men, besides women and children. And sending the crowds away, he got into a boat and went to the region of Mag Magadan. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. And here's my short homily or my short commentary on the scripture reading this morning. Let's go back to Romans chapter 14. Um, number one, you got to realize that people have different traditions. Some observe feast days, some don't. Um, but if they do it, they should do it to the Lord. And some who you can eat anything. Some people only eat vegetarian food. Some people are vegan. Whether you eat meat or whether you don't, do it unto the Lord and give thanks to God. And here's the main point I'd like to share with you. None of us lives to himself. None of us dies to himself. The same thing, no one sins alone. Because when I sin, it affects you. When you sin, it affects me. It's kind of like that ripple effect, you know, the butterfly effect that the uh, butterfly you know, flaps its wings over in Asia and it causes a tidal wave in South America. Yeah, it's kind of a stretch of the imagination, but it's like the ripples in a pond. You throw the rock in and the ripple effect goes out. So anything that we do, whether it is good or evil, doesn't just affect ourselves. It, can, it affects our brothers and our sisters. So in the, if you sow to the flesh, you reap corruption, but it also Im, impairs your fellow man. Um, if we pray, though, if we, if we sow to the Spirit, not only do we reap spiritual goodness and beneficial bene, benediction, but we also bless other people. So as we're praying, we're actually offering up a sacrifice of praise. It not only does us good because we need to pray, but it also impacts things in the realms of the spirit. You know, how many, how many of us have had mothers who have prayed for us and haven't given up on us? And you know that our lives have been spared by the prayers of a godly mother, right? You, you've heard of stories of saints praying and, and people being delivered. You have hear stories of miracles. So when we pray, it's not just us flapping our mouths in the, in the wind here. It is because dynamic power is made available. Scripture tells us that Elijah was a man with like passions as we, and he prayed that it would not rain on the earth for a period of three years and six months, and it did not rain. But then Elijah prayed again, and the, earth, and the clouds gave forth rain. And so he's telling us that the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. You know, you say, well, I don't get my prayers answered. Well, either that could be for many, many reasons. But are you going to quit just because things aren't working right? Are you going to learn how to do it? If you're a batter and your batting average is low, what do you do? You hire a batting coach, right? You get into the batting cage and you keep practicing and you keep swinging. You learn how to to improve on your skill. If ch times have changed on your job, what do you do? Just sit on your thumbs? No, you learn, you study, you learn what you need to do. Well, if your prayers aren't being heard, if it feels like it it's, it's, doesn't even rise to the top of your nose and you're not seeing any answers to your prayer, I encourage you to learn how to pray. Start praying the word, start praying with a pure heart. And that's the most important thing. And, and all of this can be summed up in the first line of the gospel reading that said Jesus called his disciples to him and says, I have compassion on the crowd. You see, our prayers need to be, be come from a well of water of love because we have compassion on others. Yes, we need to have compassion on ourselves, right? But we have compassion on our families, on our children, on our parents, on those around us, especially on the people in Louisiana. I mean, they've, they've got a flood situation going on there. Not only should we pray for them, but we should find out ways to help them. 
right? So that's something that we're going to do. We're going to pray this morning for the, the people that have lost everything. And that is compassion. Uh, compassion on the people who are homeless. Compassion on the, the, the children that are in the poverty level that don't know if they're going to have a meal in the evening. The number of homeless children that go to school in our public school system is, is staggering. What do we do about that? See, we can always put that off on somebody else or we can buy the latest concert ticket or we can buy the new pair of shoes or we can buy the newest watch or do that. But when's the last time that we paid for somebody else's electrical bill? All right? So, you're, you know, one, one guy said that, um, you know, those ex, that extra coat in your closet that belongs to the poor man. You need to give it to him. See, that's where the rubber hits the road. Now, you know, not and you don't just give stuff away all the time. You work to get involved with the person's life as best as you can. All right? Remember that saying that Jesus was talking about that many will come into him in that day and say, Lord, Lord, we haven't we prophesied in your name? Haven't we shared? Haven't we tried to live the best that we could, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? And Jesus looked at him and says, hey, get away from me. I don't know who you are. I said, because I was hungry and you didn't give me any food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was in prison and you didn't come and see me. You know, I was sick. I was in the hospital and you didn't even bother to call. You know, I was hurting and in need. I was depressed. I was in the gutter. I was full of pride and you didn't come and love me. You see what I'm saying? And then Jesus said to the, to the others, he said, you know, Lord, he goes, he tells him to enter into the joy of the kingdom. He says, because I was hungry and you fed me. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was naked and you gave me clothes. And they said, Lord, when did we see you? And Jesus said, when you've done it unto the least of these, you've done it unto me. So you can have all the spiritual prowess in the world and, and miracles. You can, and actually, you can even give all your goods to the poor. But without love and without compassion, it profits nothing. So it's not just the action by itself. It's, it needs to be coming from a pure heart. That's why we pray, create in us a clean heart, O oh God. That's why we humble ourselves and we ask God to show us because God is aware of our blindness and our ignorance. Does that make sense? So it's summed up in this reading of Matthew, which says, I have compassion on the crowd. And my prayer is for you. My prayer for me is that Lord, the Lord will increase the compassion in our heart. Does that sound good? Praise the Lord. So now that it is 727, we're back on track. And we're, not that we were off track, right? Huh. Okay, now we're going to pray for other people. I want to thank you again for joining us. I'm going to check the social media channels just to see what's going on, if we've had any comments or any prayer requests, because time to time people will send something in. Let's see what we've got here. Okay, that is on Huzzah. And this is on Fire Talk. And we're back to Facebook Live. Hope this is broadcasting good today. All right. Are you ready to pray? Yeah. Now, I use a prayer book. What do you mean a prayer book? Well, let's see. Mm hmm. My prayer book is actually on my screen. There's, there's one program that lets me screen share. And as soon as I figure out how to do that, we're going to add some function, more functionality to our prayers here. But I, I usually have a prayer book and it can, contains prayers of, uh, from people that have had good prayer lives, right? So if you want to learn how to pray, why don't you copy or, or use as an outline the prayers. Remember the apostle said to, um, uh, to Jesus, he said, they said, teach us to pray. And he said, this is how you pray, our Father in heaven, okay? Giving us a pattern of how to pray. But there's another prayer book that I would recommend that you have, and it looks something like this. Now, you can get this on our web store for $19.90. No, I'm teasing you. <laughs> you can get this at any dollar store, right? This is just a notebook, a prayer, that, that start a prayer journal, Okay. And this is where you, you write the names down of, of people that you're praying for. Isn't that a good idea? And you can have this by your desk, in your car. It doesn't have to be a big thing like this. It can be a small, small book, all right? But that's my second, my, my two prayer books. And that's how we pray. All right, now, I'm going to lead into the prayer with this prayer of consecration. 
and then we'll go into praying for others. Oh Lord, eternal creator of all things, in your great goodness you've called us to this life and you've given us the grace of baptism and the seal of the Holy Spirit and you've put within our heart the desire to seek you, the one true God, hear our prayer. Lord, we have no life, no light, or no joy, no wisdom, no strength except in you. But because of our unrighteousness, we dare not even raise our eyes to you, Lord. But you said in your word, and you said to your disciples, that whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing you shall receive, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that I will do. Wherefore, Lord, we dare to call upon your name. Lord, our first prayer is that you would purify us from every stain, every taint of the flesh and spirit, that you would make us holy and separate us. Lord, let us be living saints. Transform us into saints. Yes, holy ones. Real people, but holy. Lord, teach us to pray aright, and bless this day which you've given to us. And by the power of that blessing, enable us at all times to speak and act to your glory with a pure spirit, with humility and patience and love, gentleness, peace, kindness, meekness, courage, wisdom, Lord, always aware of your presence. Reveal to us your will every hour of this day, we pray. Lord, show us the path of your will and grant us to walk in your sight without sin. Lord, all hearts are open to you. You know what we need. You are acquainted with my blindness and my ignorance. You're acquainted, you're acquainted with my infirmity and my corruption. But Lord, neither my frustrations, pain, and anguish hid from you too. Therefore, I ask you, Lord, to hear our prayer. And by the power of your Holy Spirit, teach us the way wherein we should walk. And Lord, if our perverted will decides to venture off some other direction, Lord, please don't spare us, but force us back to you. Lord, by the power of your love, grant us to hold fast to that which is good. Preserve and protect us, O Lord, from every word and deed and action that corrupts the soul, from every impulse that's unpleasing in your sight or hurtful to our fellow man. Teach us how to say, what to say, and how to say it. And Lord, if it's your will that we say nothing, Lord, help our silence be done in a spirit of peace that causes neither hurt nor harm to our fellow man. Establish us in the way of your commandments. Lord, that your word is our delight. Lord, have mercy on us and spare us in our affliction. Lord, we've asked for many great things, but we are mindful of our wickedness and baseness. Lord, I'm the chiefest of sinners. Lord, and have mercy on me. Don't cast me away because of my presumption, but this is for the presumption I'd like you to install in me. Lord, that I may love you as you commanded, with all of my heart, my soul, my mind, my being, my strength, every fiber of my being, that I would love you, God, and that I would love my neighbor as myself. Yes, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit, teach us good judgment and knowledge, and let us to know, lead us to know your truth, and allow us to offer you true transformation. Lord, don't take us away in the midst of our days, but Lord, give us time to repent and to change. Cleanse us from all secret faults and things that are hidden from our own understanding. Lord, let us give a right answer before your judgment seat. And Lord, be with us this day in a special way and at that dread hour when we stand before you. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, to whom all hearts are open, we ask you to pray through us and teach us how to pray as we intercede for one another. Lord, Jesus Christ, Son of God, for the sake of your eternal mercy and loving kindness, you became man and you suffered crucifixion and death for the salvation of all. You rose from the dead and ascended into heaven. You sit at the right hand of the Father, where you hear the prayers of all who call upon you humbly and with their whole heart. Lord, we ask you to listen to the prayers that we, your servants, offer as a spiritual sacrifice to your people. Lord, first of all, we ask that you remember your holy Catholic and apostolic church, the church that you purchased with your precious blood, the church that you started on the day of Pentecost when you said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. We pray for that church that started on the day of Pentecost and has continued on down. Your body, Lord, we pray for that holy Catholic and apostolic church. Lord, we ask you to strengthen it, multiply it, keep it in peace, and do not allow the gates of hell to prevail against it. Lord, prevent schisms among the churches, pacify the ragings of the pagans, and quickly destroy the uprisings of heresies by the power of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, let's pray, and my friends, let's pray for our individual churches that we're familiar with right now. Lord, we pray for the church in Lakeland. Lord, have mercy on the church here in Lakeland. Let us work together for your common good. Amen. And now, Lord, 
We ask that you have mercy upon the President of the United States, the Congress, the Judiciary, the Governors, and all who make and administer our laws. So therefore, Lord, we pray for President Barack Obama. We pray for Vice President Joe Biden. We pray for the Supreme Court Justices. We pray for the Congressmen, the Senators, and the Representatives. Lord, especially for Senator Dennis, or Congressman Dennis Ross. Lord, we pray for these individuals. Lord, and all those who make and administer our laws. Father, Lord, we ask that you would remove from office men and women who are evil, and we ask you to raise men and women of integrity who listen to godly counsel, whose sole purpose is to be statesmen and to be to live honorably, not to push their own agenda for their own selfish means, but Lord, for those that serve the people, so that this, so that we can leave a lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. So therefore, we pray for the upcoming elections. Lord, open the minds of the American people. Open the hearts and grant us wisdom. Have mercy, O oh Lord, upon America. Lord, we need your help. Lord, we need your help, Lord. Lord, we ask you for your help. We pray, Lord, have mercy on this country. Lord, we beseech you, we humbly ask you to raise up men and women of integrity, not bozos and jokers, God. We want people who are, in, who are strong and men and women of integrity. I keep mentioning that, oh God, but that's what we need. We need men of honor and women of honor and decent people to stand up and choose the paths of righteousness, to do what's right. When I say righteousness, I'm not talking about walking around with some fake halo on their head, Lord. I'm talking about that they do what is proper and just for the people, not just for the rich and greedy or the powerful, but for the poor and needy. And most of all, for the middle, quote, middle class people, Lord, the single dads, the single moms, those who are struggling from paycheck to paycheck, who are caught up in a system and don't know how to escape, who have been misled by advertisers across this country of the things that they need and don't need. Lord God, we pray that this, this capitalism, which God, that is, is wonderful in some ways and it's horrible in other ways, because if people blind lead the blind, and Lord, people just rush off in consumerism, and it's become their God. They would rather go to a football game than go to worship God, to, to love their neighbors. They'll buy everything else except, except help the poor and help their own families. Lord, and they say, well, they deserve it, the stupid idiots. And Lord, the pride and the anger that's in our country, Lord, Lord, let it begin with us. Lord, let it begin also by raising up a new generation of leaders that are knowledgeable in history and in statesmanship, we pray. Lord God, we also pray for the city authorities and the county commissions. We pray for those who serve us and protect us, the, the local uh, law enforcement officers, the police, the sheriffs, especially Sheriff Grady Judd, uh, Wyatt Earp. Yes. <laughs> he reminds me of Wyatt Earp. I don't know why. But Lord, we pray for the, the, the suffering families of our law enforcement officials who have been slaughtered in the line of duty. Lord, have mercy on them and grant them your peace, we pray. And Lord, we pray for all who serve in our military, the Army, Air Force, Navy, and Marines. Lord, and the Coast Guard, the National Guard. Lord, all those who protect and serve us. And Lord, give them continual victory and peace over under over unrighteousness and over evil in all places. And may they, may, may they provide peace so that your holy church and all your people may live calm and ordered lives in your sight in true faith and prayer with godly deeds. Now, if you have somebody that's a, a, that you know of that is a representative, is a congressman, that's a government official, you know, like you might want to pray for the people at uh, uh, the IRS. <laughs> Lord help them. Lord, you might want to pray for you, you might want to pray for the people in the uh, HRS, the Department of Children and Families. And that's a rough job. You know who we can pray for today? We can pray for our school teachers. We can pray for our children or students going to school. We can pray for the teachers. We can pray for the school bus drivers and the administration, not only in our public schools, but in private schools and our colleges. Lord, have mercy on them, we pray. Lord, we pray again that you raise up men and women of integrity. Grant them visitation and answer the prayers of school teachers that lead to their salvation and eternal life. May your will be done in their lives as it is in heaven. Lord, strengthen them and provide all their needs, we pray, according to your riches and glory. We pray for our school teachers. We pray for our public schools. We pray for um, 
uh, George Jenkins High School, for Lakeland High School, for Kathleen High School, and for, what's the other high school? Lake Gibson, here in the city of Lakeland. Lord, have mercy on these students. Have mercy on these teachers, we pray. And Lord, encourage them. We pray that you touch their families and minister life to them. Lord, who else can we pray for? Lord, we pray for those involved in the guardian ad litem system. Do you know what a guardian ad litem is? You know, people that are going through a divorce and they have children. You know, usually the mom has an attorney and the dad has an attorney. Well, who's to speak for the kids? And too often our children are used as pawns because of selfish desires. Now, people think that they're loving their kids, of course. But see, there's one thing that we can't see in a mirror, and that's our pride and our arrogance. Because when we look in the mirror, we don't see pride, we don't see arrogance, unless it's been given a gift of God that we see it. So usually we're in the midst of the fight. Our own anger has blinded our minds. So Lord, we pray for the guardian ad litem system. Lord, raise up people to be involved in the guardian ad litem program to help the kids go through this traumatic event. Lord, bless those who are already involved. Strengthen them by the power of your Holy Spirit. Send your holy angels, terrestrial and celestial angels. That means human beings and, and the angels around the throne. Lord God, and the guardian angels for the children. Lord, minister life and encouragement to the children we pray this day. Now you can probably think of some other government officials we need to pray for. Do so. See, because when you pray, what you're doing, you're making intercession and you're taking hold together of that government official and you're taking hold together of Almighty God and the mercy of God and you're bringing them together. You're standing in the gap making intercessions. So what intercession is, is one who stands in the gap. All right, let's pray for our clergy. Lord, that's a big job here. Have mercy, O Lord, on popes and patriarchs and metropolitans, archbishops and bishops and priests and deacons and the whole order of your clergy, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and the teachers, all those involved in music in the church. Lord, all those involved in evangelism in your church, the monks and the nuns, those involved in serving others. Lord, we pray them for the missionaries. Lord, we pray that you save them. Those whom you've established to feed the flock of your word, by their prayers have mercy on us, sinners, and save us. Now, this is when I usually write a list of the people that I'm praying for. And so I'm trying to get organized with a better list, and I'm redoing this. So we pray for Father Nicholas and Pani Wanda, and Father Maximus Urbanowitz, and Father Deacon Daniel Dozier and his wife Karen, and for Bishop David Dolitz and Bishop Craig J. N. DePaulo. We pray for Bishop Michael Neesmith and Father Deacon Carlos and his wife Wanda. We pray for Tony Ponsetti and for Duke Matlock and Butch Vanderpool and, and Kim Johnson of Watchmen Arise Ministries and Tony Allen and Jasmine of the Central Florida Food Bank. And uh, we pray for Father Constantine and for Mother Andrea of the St. Nicholas Monastery in North Fort Myers. We pray for Metropolitan Hilarion and Metropolitan Isaiah. We pray for Archbishop Carrill and the priest John and priest Anthony, Pastor Bill McCabe of Southside Baptist, of Lee Burroughs and his teaching ministry, of Charles Edwards and Jay Lenore Bressler and Pastor Paul and Naomi Mauzo. Lord, we also pray, and, I, and it's, my list is not complete here. Let me see if I've missed anybody. Lord, we pray for Abbot Trifon. We pray for Dustin Lawrence and Christy. We pray for Father Mark Hodges and Donna, Father Andy Joan and Father John Peck and Father Johannes Jacobsy and Dr. Greg Morrison Sandy of Leadership Dynamics. And Lord, we pray for Josh. We pray for Josh, who is the son of Dr. Greg and Sandy, who's lost everything in the people in the flood in Louisiana. Everything gone car, the house, all their possessions, gone. And they're living with, other, with friends right now. And they posted some of that on Facebook. So Lord, we pray for Josh right now and his family and all those others who are suffering from the floods in Louisiana and also for the fires that are, the, the people are battling the fires in other parts of the country. Lord God, have mercy on them. Grant them aid. Lord, allow your church to rise up and minister life to these people, we pray. 
Lord, we pray for Fathers Tom Soroka and Joni Marie and for his wife and for Father Barnabas Powell and for Jonathan Cook and Tammy of the St. Ticon Mission and an Archpriest Mark Rowe and his wife Rebecca. And Lord, we pray for um, uh, Sean Britt, pa Father Sean, and for Deacon John and for Pastor Glenn Ward. And Lord, we pray for Daniel Fonestock's pastors as well. And Lord, we ask that you would answer their prayers that lead to salvation and eternal life. All right, we're getting ready to wrap up here. But Lord, we pray and pray for me, Lord God, that I would fulfill the ministry that you've called me to. Lord, I want to thank you for a new place to stay. I want to thank you for a new place to set up the mission. I want to thank you for a new place to set up the house of prayer. Lord God, I want to thank you for patrons that are supporting this ministry. Lord, I especially pray for James Coulter and his wife. I want to thank you for Dr. Horst Matz. I want to thank you for Sister Joanna. I want to thank you for Mike and Michelle Birmingham. Thank you for my patrons, Lord God. I want you to bless each one of them and multiply your goodness to them. And thank you, Lord God, for supporting this work that we can continue doing what we're doing. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Lord, have mercy on our spiritual fathers and mothers and save them and by their holy prayers forgive us our transgressions. And Lord, have mercy on our parents and save them together with our brothers and sisters, our aunts and uncles, cousins and friends, and our kinfolk after the flesh, and all whose hearts are knit closely with ours. Lord, we pray that you grant them your blessing both now, here, and in the age to come. Lord, especially pray for Martha, Kathleen, Brandon, and myself. Lord God, meet our needs according to your riches and glory and answer our prayers that lead to salvation and eternal life. Grant us health and healing, we pray, and the strength that we need to accomplish your work. Lord, I pray for Larry Fonestock, for Justin and Rebecca, and for Alan and Linda. We pray for my brother Keith Green and Lori, his wife, and for Kent and Cole, and for Ricky Green. God, have mercy on them. Answer their prayers that lead to salvation and eternal life and bless them with visitation, we pray. Lord, we pray for Jennifer and Jim Pennywell, for Brooke and Josh Walker, for Bradley and Brady, and for Fran, and for, for Max Reynolds and their families. Lord, we also pray for the ones that are joining us on prayer today, especially Sister Joanna, and for Matt, and for uh, Rick, Lord God. And let's see, who else has joined us here that I can see? All right. Lord, we pray for Mother Cherie, Sister Cherie, and for the archpriest that she um, uh, was praying for that was in recovery. We pray for speedy recovery for him, Lord. Amen. Lord, we also pray for uh, Patricia and Jose Antonio, for Nora Eugenia, for Luz Delia, for Carlos Alberto, for Marcos Hernando, and for Ruth for Todd and Evelyn and the Casa de Paz that meets in their house, and for Isaac and Nicholas, for Caesar and Diana, for Juan Felipe and Daniela, for Michelle and Marty Predu, for Katie McNellis and Lauren Predu. We pray for Christopher Fonestock, Jeanette Fonestock, Michael Merlin and Noah and Tice. We pray for Timmy and her family, for Sue Ann and her family. We pray for William Portillas and Billy and, and Suyapa, Hernandez and Monica. Lord, have mercy on them and grant them your peace. Answer their prayers that lead to salvation and eternal life. May your will be done in their lives as it is in heaven. Lord, bring healing where healing, especially for Mary Jean and her daughter and for Bruce Kirby and his wife, Janie. Bring restoration and healing, we pray. Lord, we also pray for uh, Ken Delinsky, for Eileen Smith, for Uncle Ronald, for Dalen and for Taylor. Lord, have mercy on them, we pray and grant them your peace. And Lord, we thank you and we give you praise. Lord, have mercy on all who travel and save them, all those who are sent on duty, our brothers and sisters and all Christians. Lord, have mercy on the old and young, the needy, the orphans, the widows, and all who are in sickness and sorrow and distress and affliction, oppression. We pray for Libby Cumbie and the ministry that she does for the prison systems and for the recovery and celebrate life. Lord, celebrate recovery. We pray for... Uh, uh, Chris Elrod and for Robert Beckman, Lord God, have mercy on them, and Jason Burns and other pastors that are reaching out to your community. Lord, we pray for the Word Up Ministries, and we ask that your blessing be upon them. Lord, remember them, visit them, strengthen and comfort them, and by the power of your Holy Spirit, grant them speedy relief, freedom, and deliverance. Lord, have mercy on our enemies. Save all those who envy us, who wish us evil, or who deal unjustly with us. And may they not perish because of us sinners. Lord, we also pray for the children of these enemies, the children of the terrorists, Lord, who are born into hell. 
Lord, we pray that you would visit them and give them divine revelation and send your Holy Spirit to reveal truth and love to them. Lord, enlighten with the truth of your holy wisdom all who have gone astray from the faith. You were led by destructive heresies and divergent philosophies and unite them once more to your holy Catholic and apostolic church. Amen, amen, amen. Remember, O oh Lord, those who have departed this life, all popes and patriarchs, metropolitans, archbishops, and all who served in your priesthood and ministry of the church, the monastic order, and grant them with all your saints eternal kingdom. Remember, O oh Lord, the souls of your servants now fallen asleep, our parents, family, and friends, and forgive them all of their sins committed in knowledge or in ignorance, and grant them your kingdom, a portion of eternal blessing and the enjoyment of your unending life. Remember, O oh Lord, those who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection of the dead, our brothers and sisters, and Christians throughout the world, and place them with your saints before the light of your countenance, and have mercy on us, for you are a good God and you love mankind. And in closing, let's pray for our cities and our churches. Oh, Heavenly Father, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to touch the hearts of the people in Lakeland, Florida, and you mention the name of your community where you're living. We ask you to encourage them to seek the living truth, your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and his holy church. We pray that their hearts may be turned away from the power of darkness, from temptations of this world, and the words of heretical teachers. We also pray for ourselves that our hearts would be not hardened, but open to the gospel, that we would be transformed by obedience to your word, and that we would ever listen to the voice of your spirit. We pray for the church in Lakeland, and we pray for the church around the world, that it, these churches and congregations may be true havens of rest, encouragement and hope for all who call them home. And Lord, we pray for all who call upon the name of the Lord, Jesus Christ may be one, even as your Son and the Holy Spirit are one. Amen, amen, amen. It is truly right to bless you, O Theotokos, ever virgin and most pure mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and more glorious and beyond compare than the seraphim, who in virginity you gave birth to God the Word. True Theotokos, we magnify you. And let's give all glory and praise and honor and worship to God alone, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. And now I pray for my brothers and sisters as we leave this prayer time and we go forth to love and serve you. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be upon you, in you, live big within you, transform your lives, give you strength and hope this day. Lord, and answer, the Lord will answer your prayers that lead to salvation and eternal life. Thank you so much for joining with us for morning prayers this morning. You're welcome at any time. You're welcome to send any questions, any uh, any um, suggestions, questions, coups, death threats, whatever. You can message me. And I want to thank you so much. God bless you. Have a fantastic day and be inspired by the power of the Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.